and head in the clouds. Now, the mills in Chunwan is well known as the business incubator that provides funds, space and labs for textile startups. They recently promoted the Textile for Social Good International Online Competition. And the aim of the competition was to support technology and lifestyle innovations from students and fresh graduates around the world, focusing on apparel and textiles and agri-food tech. Sounds rather complicated, doesn't it? They had over, over about 160 entries from teams across the world, including China, USA, UK, Australia, Africa and India. And just last week, they announced the three winners for this year's awards. And I'm thrilled to have them on the show. We are having a couple of techno problems, so I hope we will get them. But we certainly do have in the studio Felix Chung. And Felix is based in Hong Kong and he impressed the judges with his food-based idea. Good afternoon to you, Felix. Hi, Sadia. Nice to be here. Lovely to have you here. And I noticed you've got some boxes. Before anything else, Felix, tell us, you won the award for the community, the community Style Award. So what exactly is your product? Tell me about it. Well, we have developed a technology that we feel that it's going to revolutionize the food industry. Like uh, it's basically the ultimate in food preservation methods. So our technology called ASAP, which is actually short for Advanced Sous Vide Aseptic Packaging, what it can do is it enables the storage of fresh meats at room temperature for up to two years. Wow. My goodness. All right, so how how is this done? I mean, is this all kind of... You've got some boxes. I've got some beef sirloin in front of me. Yes. And it says, yeah. So you says, can put this in your cupboard, in oh, your pantry, wow. and you don't need refrigeration. And the great thing is, if you open it, mm -hmm. you see a... Oh, yeah. 10 ounce um, wow, sirloin steak. Wow, that looks like a nice sirloin steak. <laughs> These pictures, you can actually see a picture of this on my Facebook page. If you just go to Sadia on RTHK Radio 3, you can see those pictures. So that's interesting. Two years shelf life. Yes. Wow. And the way we do it is we have a sterilization technology that enables us to kill all the bacteria at the amazingly low temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. So with that bacteria, the meat simply won't spoil. Mm, let me have a look at that. Mm. So this is a vacuum packed um, piece of meat. I could see like if I press it, I could see blood here and there. Yes. But it's a nice <laughs> juicy steak here. And so in like two years, you can just leave it out. No fridge, no nothing. No nothing. And this okay. is great for the, especially for the current situation. You know, we have like disruptions in the food supply chain and people have to get like extra freezers in order to store their yeah, meats. That's so this technology will enable us to store your meat at room temperature for a mm. long time. And that's super because certainly, say, for places like Hong Kong, um, you know, people have small kitchens. There's not much freezer space or anything like that. But these things, like if it was there, you could use it. Now, what are the kind of implications of this for the future? Is it is it very expensive to do that? To, we to estimated that, that um, uh, when it goes into mass production, that cost of the technology will be less than two US dollar per kilogram of food processed. Mm -hmm. So with all the advantages, including the extended shelf life, the convenience and the sustainability, it's more than enough to cover the costs. Wow. So what inspired you to do this? Was it partly, I suppose you've been working on it for some time now. Six years. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> yeah, like, um, well, I started off um, uh, as a scientist. I graduated from the university with uh, a doctorate degree in plasma physics. And then uh, I studied a second master's degree in uh, food analysis and food safety management at Hong Kong Baptist University, where I met my uh, classmate turned co-founder, Elton. We were studying the microbial risk of um, sous vide food, like sous vide. It's a very trendy, low temperature uh, cooking technique mm -hmm. that many chefs around the world uses. Um, uh, we were trying to use the technique to make a shelf stable, edible bird's nest, which is good for the health tonic market in Hong Kong. We didn't develop that, but what we've learned actually helped us develop this amazing technology. Mm, that's amazing. So now what's the future? I mean, can we see, this is obviously the prototype type thing. Mm. Can we see this on the shelves? Is that what's, what's your next step? What's your Yes, aim? we are working with uh, major uh, meat processors around the world. Like currently we are working with uh, Cargill, the sec uh, world's second largest meat processor. And we are trying to uh, like scale up the technology. And also next, uh, uh, next month, uh, we, we will be launching a Kickstarter campaign where we will offer 
one thousand pieces of these uh, amazing sirloin steaks and pork chops around the world. Can I book mine? I don't just book it now, okay? Because I don't only have much for you, Sadia. Because <laughs> I don't have much for the space at all, and it's it is a, a real mission. But that sounds amazing. And so now, you know, what what do you want to do? Like in five years' time or whatever, where do you see yourself? I want to um, become the next Tetra Pak. So Tetra Pak is a, a Swiss company, sweet uh, a Swiss company that uh, does uh, aseptic packaging for liquids like juice and milk. We want to be the leading aseptic packaging company in solids like meat, fish, and seafood. Wow. Well, Felix, I wish you luck, and um, it sounds like an amazing thing. And I do hope that, yes, you know, I'm going to get my first package anyway, because, you know, I think it sounds very good indeed. But uh, well done to you, and congratulations, and I wish you a lot of luck on that. We are going to try and get in touch with the other contestants as well, who the winners. Um, but we are having a few problems, so in the meantime, let's... That's Ron Pope and a drop in the ocean. And, you know, I have um, I've have had a couple of technical problems because what happened is I bought a new phone recently and we have a little socket in the studio where you can plug it in and you can connect to WhatsApp. And my phone does not have that socket. So we are trying very hard to set up the interviews, but I'm afraid I may have to shift them to Noreen's program at some point. So we will hear more about the other contestants. But Felix is still here and Felix says, I can talk till the cows come home. So... And I hope those cows are not the ones with the sirloin meat here. But uh, Felix, thank you so, so much. I wanted to ask you really as a startup before you go, really, um, to ask you about how difficult, because I know a lot of people in Hong Kong, um, you know, think about starting a business and things like that. For you, you know, you must have been quite young when you started. And what were the challenges for you? Well, the challenges is uh, getting people to believe you, because like, uh, especially if you have uh, like a deep technology that is uh, revolutionary. The chances are ninety-nine percent of the people that you talk to uh, won't believe you or think you're crazy. And you really need to know, have the like the confidence that what you're doing is correct and you're heading the right direction. And basically, my advice is just persist, persist, and persist, and get there. Mm -hmm. And what skills do you think were absolutely crucial for you, apart from that determination, the skills that you need in order to get out there? Because, you know, you'll have days where obviously you're trying and somebody may say, no, I don't think we're interested. What, what skills do you need to get out there? I really feel that like in Hong Kong, the parents are really focused on uh, training kids uh, IQ. Um, but in my experience, in order to be like a, a, a startup entrepreneur, you need to train their AQ and EQ, especially AQ, the adversity quotient. Because like on the roads, you'll find that, you know, there, there will be many um, uh, challenges, hurdles, and you just um, have to have the feeling that you, you never get defeated and then you just keep on moving. And that's how you succeed. Mm -hmm. And also, like, you know, you've got that sort of tech background and stuff. But I suppose when you think of putting a business together, there's a lot of other things that you need to be aware of, the whole financial side and budgeting and stuff like that. Is that something that you go and get some help for? Or if you've got a team, are you working within a team? Well, I, I'm quite lucky. I've got a very good team uh, who has a very positive attitude. And also, like, from the very beginning, we have, like, a seed investor who donated like um, uh, three million US dollar into this technology, mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, in terms of like uh, uh, the financial, like uh, starting the business, I think you really have to listen to your client clients and listen to their needs. What are their concerns and try to overcome their concerns, and that's how you get their business. Mm, I know, and I suppose it's going back to what you think. I mean, when you thought of the idea for this product. Did that just come up one day where you just suddenly thought, you know, there is a gap in the market here? What did you think? Yes. Um, to be honest, like we were, tra uh, I was traveling in Japan with my team and then we we saw this um, a squid, Hokkaido squid. And um, we, we just suddenly got the inspiration <laughs> right. about how to do the sterilization. And then that's how the technology came that about. That poor squid. <laughs> <laughs> so you just suddenly thought you want to take that squid home with you and you want to keep it and take it out at a special time when you want to eat it but you can't keep it for too long well i was wondering how 
um, it, it was a field squid, a rice field squid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering, like, how do they do the sterilization? Um, actually, they use traditional retort sterilization. So it's sort of like canning. Um, but ultimately, due to the thinking process, that inspired us into thinking of how to separate the food into the different components and applying different sterilization techniques. And then we achieved this um, sous vide meat mm -hmm. product mm -hmm. that is shelf stable at room temperature. And in terms of it, the quality of its taste, nothing deteriorates. It's if sort you of... cut it open right now, the cross section. I thought is... a frying pan, I would, but I'm afraid not in the studio at the moment. Right? <laughs> well, actually, if you have a knife, all we need is a knife. But, and, and if you cut the, uh, the meat right now, yeah. the cross section is medium rare, pink, mm. juicy, and tender. So that needs cooking, right? Uh, you, you can eat it straight out of the packet. Oh, right. Okay. Or you, uh, but for best results, we would recommend that you pan fry it to to give it a nice sear. So these on the are surface. these are obviously semi cooked or uh, or fully cooked yes. things. And semi cooked at sixty degrees so Celsius. It's perfect for restaurants, and things like that. For, for restaurants, for camping, uh, we are even thinking of uh, about like pairing with wine. Well, I'm going to have to take your autograph now because I know you're going to be way up there in a few years' time, <laughs> Felix. Okay, thank you so much, and I managed to get more information out of him. My apologies for not being able to bring the other guests, but I promise you we will make sure that they get onto Noreen's program so they can tell you a little bit more about it but thank you ever so much all right I've never